Good day, YouTubers, and welcome to another video. We've had some terrible, terrible weather this year, and I've been watching the weather for an opportunity to get offshore again. I've mentioned that I wanted to get offshore and do some fishing in the areas that I was going to talk about in the offshore series. I saw an opportunity coming up on Thursday and Friday. I booked some time off work. The idea was to finish up early on Thursday, head out, go offshore overnight out there, do some nighttime fishing, get some sounder shots, and come back in and add that to the offshore series. However, I checked the forecast on the Wednesday morning. I checked the Wave Rider Boy on the Wednesday morning, and they were tracking about the same. The Wave Rider Boy was about a metre, and the waves were reducing in height over the last day or two. So it all looked good for the forecast to come out right, about a metre or maybe a bit less of swell. 13 second period, absolute beautiful conditions for offshore. Made up my mind I was going. Come Thursday, rushed to finish work, rushed to get the boat, get out, didn't check the wave rider buoy. 36 hours had gone by since I'd last checked it. And that is more than enough time for a radical change. In my excitement, I just forgot. I won't say it was a bad trip. I did enjoy my time on the water. I wouldn't say the conditions were dangerous. I've certainly fished in a lot worse. But they were uncomfortable and nothing went to plan after I got across the bar. That happens sometimes. Let's roll the video. This is heading out out of Raby Bay on the Thursday afternoon, heading up towards the Rouse Channel to go out to South Passage Bar. As you can see from the video, it was perfect conditions. The bay was absolutely beautiful. Because I hadn't checked the Wave Rider buoy, I just looked at the forecast for offshore. I expected the same out there. I'm out wide to do a bit of night fishing. The uh, forecast was telling Porkies about the swell though. The forecast said it was going to be less than a metre and I'm seeing some come through the certainly over two metres. Times like this you need your life jacket on, that's for sure. Alright, which way are we drifting? Not much at all. Alright, not one out anyway. There we go. Whew. Probably too much weight on that actually. I think it's going down too quick. Don't you dare. Alright, stick you there then. Oh, I need some weight on that. I hope the video is up to this sunset. That's sunset over Stradbroke from probably you know, 15, 20 miles east of it. I think I mentioned earlier that they told the porky about the swell. It's, uh, it's died down a bit, but 
As you can see, you still lose sight of strad brakes sometimes in amongst the troughs. Uh, there's no way this is a, you know, under a metre swell. There's not much action on the fishing front, but you can see how it goes as the night wears on. The swell was coming mostly in from the south. The wind was, again, mostly from south, southwestish, and I think the current was running north to south. And the sum total of it was practically no drift at all. The boat barely moved the whole time I was there. I think it went maybe 100 metres or so. But that didn't stop the waves, and that was pretty uncomfortable. I was a little bit concerned moving around the boat that one would take me by surprise and I might lose my balance and end up in the water. And it was just generally uncomfortable. So I decided I'd head in. I think I stuck it out there for about two or three hours. So I headed in for the shelter of North Stradbroke Island. And once I got into the shelter of the island, sheltering from those southerly swell, it was a lot better. It was pitch black when I came back in. There was no moon out that night, so I had no light at all. I did have the GPS track on my way out, so that helped me find my way back in. It wasn't whaling season. You see the odd one around. But I wasn't all that concerned about hitting a whale in the dark. So I headed back in, negotiated around the group and boat rock and shag rock a bit further in and anchored up in the North Stradbroke artificial reef area. After I did the housekeeping and had a little bit to eat, I looked at the weather to see what had gone wrong. I knew what I'd done wrong, but I wanted to see what the actual forecast and the reality of it said. Because I took this screenshot at night time, we didn't get to see what the forecast said on the Thursday afternoon, but I can tell you what it said. It said that the swell would be up to a metre, sometimes below, and a period of about 12 to 13 seconds, which was really, really good, almost glass out conditions out there. And you can see the time period highlighted in the screenshot here of just when I was out there, roughly. And this screenshot here is from the Wave Rider boy, showing the reality of the conditions out there during the time period that I was there. You can see that's highlighted there now. The significant wave height was around 2 metres, and we had the peak wave heights of up to 4 metres while I was out there. I wasn't that far from the Wave Rider boy, so that's a pretty accurate description of what it was like. I just got a little bit too excited to be getting offshore. And I forgot to check the Wave Rider buoy just before I left home, which is something I nearly always do. At least the conditions were really good at the North Peel Artificial Reef. I had a good night's sleep. Not very much rock at all. It was a really great night out there. That's the north end of North Stradbroke Island over there. Point lookout just there. And look at that dawn coming up. Now I'm just sitting here on the North Stradbroke Artificial Reef because it was so rough out there last night that I wimped out and I came in for some shelter. The forecast was less than a metre of uh, swell. The real deal was two metre, close to two metres uh, with the odd four metre swell coming through. So that put me off. It was most uncomfortable out there. I put up with it for two or three hours and that was it. I decided I'd pull the pin and I'd just come in and have a sleep, which is what I've done. Looking at the Wave Rider boy, it's still the same out there this morning. So I'm not going back out there. I'll go back into the bay and find somewhere to fish in there. Surprisingly, I did catch something big last night here at the North Stradbroke Artificial Reef. First time I've ever hooked up anything big here. I had the rod in the rod holder and before I could even get to it, it had run me into uh, some of the artificial reef, I guess, and cut the line. It happened really quick. It was on that rod there. It's got 40 pound braid on it with a 40 pound leader and the drag was set at about 12 pounds. So whatever it was had a bit of energy behind it to run that drag off and take me straight into the artificial reef. Before I could even get out of my seat and get to the pick up the rod, I, I did get out of my seat, I just didn't get to pick up the rod. And it was gone. No idea what it was, could have been a shark, but whatever it was, a little bit of excitement for the night, just before I went to bed.
first fish of the day. Bit of a baby. He'll be going back, but at least I'm on the board. First fish of the oh, well, not counting the bait. First fish of the trip, actually. What is he? Twenty-five. Might be second fish of the day. Oh, a grinner. <laughs> uh. Oh, Billy. You're Billy, mate. Bigger, but I don't think he's legal. What is he? Thirty, thirty-two. Oh, best thing about these quick sinkers. Only a second or two between having weight and not having it. Oh, I've got something on there. Might have some interest. on. Something got my livey. Oh no, maybe not. There he is. He's not showing much signs of wanting to go down, though. Might have to give him a bit of an assist on that. 
That's enough to encourage him down. for a minute. change and she's done oh, got something on here I think tiny whatever it is but it will to be a grinner yep grinner Dolphin. Don't you go taking my bait, will you? Neither of us will be very happy if you do that. Yeah, hello. No, well, dolphin didn't stick around for long, so hunting can't be too good around here. Let's have a couple of casts. Give us another rod and let's see about moving, maybe. Oh, well, something did take the bait there. Ooh, what the hell? Something bit. Must be that bloody toads again. I had four hooks, four gang hooks on that. Now I've only got two. Jeez, has to be the toad. That's about the only thing can bite through a hook like that. Now I'd come back in and I had a little bit of a fish around the bay, but I'd have to say I was pretty dispirited about the whole thing. I'd messed up on assessing the weather, that much was on me. But I'd also done a software upgrade on my Raymarine chart plotter. It was the worst piece of software I've ever used. That's probably being overly harsh because I've used some pretty awful software in the past. However, I can certainly say that is the worst piece of software that I've ever had to use where it could have been a life-threatening situation. I can't imagine why they released it and in fact I know they withdrew it from release until they fixed some of the bugs in it. The unit was continually freezing, it was randomly rebooting and sometimes the sound of part of it didn't even work at all. But combined with the bad weather offshore, by the time I got back, had a bit of a fish around, saw how many people were around, I, I sort of thought if I came back in the bay I'd have it roughly to myself, 
with maybe just a few around, but it was crowded. It was as bad as any weekend I've ever seen. As a consequence of all that, I was pretty dispirited, so I just sort of headed on back, had a little bit of a fish around, peel, poke around there. Didn't do any good there either, and came on home early. I was back in well before lunch. Because the plan all fell apart, I'd have to say the actual trip itself wasn't stellar, even though I did enjoy my time on the water. Anyway, hopefully we'll do a bit better on the next trip. Until then, good fishing.